these contraptions? I'm afraid not very much. What seems to be the trouble? Well, if I knew you, it just won't go. Oh, well, I suppose it serves me right for going out without my chauffeur. Is there a garage in this neighborhood? The nearest one's about three blocks. Oh, oh. Here you are. Have us in a mechanic. Well, that's all right. I'll have them send one over. <laughs> my, what a nice young man you are. And do hurry, my son will be so worried. Yes, ma'am. Okay, Charlie, hop to it. Jim Lacey, here's a flash. Some smart guy cuts a main burglar alarm cable in a hole in third and Lester and pops off every bell in the district. Then when the cops are running around in circles, he blows the belt jewelry safe and grabs a famous diamond necklace called the Zyrenus Tear. <laughs> We've got to recover that necklace, Ridgeway. I want you to put your best men on this case. Well, it's hardly my case. Of course, if I can do anything. It's your company's case to the extent of $100,000. That's the amount you'll have to pay us if we don't recover. Mr. Phelps, you were notified a month ago that your policy would not be renewed. Why, there must be some misunderstanding. My check for this year's premium was accepted, endorsed by your firm, and paid. When was this policy renewed? I think it was about a month ago when you were in Boston. Yes, I'm sure it was. I took the liberty of... You took the liberty? Why, yes. The policy had been in force a number of years, and I received a renewal check, so automatically I... That will be all, Miss Harrison? Very well, Mr. Phelps. In the event recovery of this necklace is not affected, your claims will be promptly paid. Well, of course. <clears throat> Thank you. Mr. Ridgway, may I suggest that you leave this case entirely in the hands of the police? Well, Lieutenant Eckert, I'm glad to see that you're cooperating with us in your usual efficient manner. <laughs> However, I'm reserving the right to engage my own investigator. Listen, Ridgway, you've paid Barry Drake thousands of dollars for the return of stolen property that the department could have recovered at no cost to you. Well, I admit he's been very successful. But he's just as much a crook as the crooks he does business with. And one of these days we'll prove it. I've been trying to find you all day. I wanted to tell you. I know, I know. The Zarina's tears have been stolen. How did you know? Maybe I was around when it happened. Was you? Or maybe I read it in the morning paper. You know who done it? I'm not quite sure, but I have a pretty good idea. Well, you're sure tough to find as a girl been trying to get you on the phone all day. A girl? Yeah, a Miss uh, Harrison, Dale Harrison. Harrison. 
Harris. I don't know any Dale Harrison. Was she uh, good looking? Well, uh, oh, how do I know? I only talked to her on the phone. But she had a good looking voice. Yeah? All right. Get her on the phone for me. Boss, could you let me have another nickel? Apparently, I can't trust you with money, White House. I'm afraid I'll have to make that call myself. Yes, sir. I'll take it. I'll take it. Hello. Oh, hello, Barry. Hello. I, I, I've been trying to locate you. Yes. Uh, did you read the papers about the robbery? Yeah, well, I'm in a spot. Somebody pulled a boner. Mr. Ridgway, I never talk business when I... Now, we want that necklace back and no questions asked. There's $5,000 in it for you. Did you say $10,000? What? Just a minute while I entertain your proposition. Well, 10,000 is all right, but get it back. I accept. As a matter of fact, I am already working on the case. You have nothing to worry about, Mr. Ridgway. The Tsarina's tears will be on your hands before you know it. Okay. Are you a dreamer in love with love? Have you the idea you a dream? Hey, uh, fella. You're supposed to be looking at me, not that singer out there. Why all the interest? Strictly professional, darling. Oh, oh she's old enough to be your mother. <laughs> Let's dream together. One dream for two. Excuse me for a minute. What again? Is there a moment? Hello, Charlie. Hello, Greg. How are you? Do you mind? No, not at all. A drink? Thanks. There goes. Are you a dreamer in love with love? Have you the idea you're dreaming of? Then there's but one thing we both should do. Let's dream together. One dream for two. How are you? Oh, why, hello, Mr. Drake. Do you know uh, Mr. Cooper? No, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. How do you do, Miss... Uh... Uh, Lamont, Lily Lamont. Sit down, Lily, sit down. Thank you. I uh, <clears throat> enjoyed your number very much, Miss Lamont. Oh, that's very sweet of you. Oh, Lily's a great girl. Oh, uh, <clears throat> by the way, I saw you flirting with that bald-headed chap out there. Remember what you promised me last time? No more two-timing. <clears throat> well, I think I'll leave you two to get acquainted. Uh, now remember, Lily, no more trifling. Hey, what is this? Why, I don't even know what he was talking about. Oh, you don't even know what he was talking about, huh? Listen, if you're running around with that Drake Charlie, guy... Charlie, please. I've never been out with Drake in my life. The last time I saw him was two years ago. He was on a case I was mixed up in. Yeah? Listen, you take care of the check and I'll see you later.
Have you looked under the wallpaper yet? <laughs> I was uh, coming to that. Come on, Charlie, I give up. Where is it? You're hardly in a position to be asking questions, are you? Technically, no. But you can't use that thing. It makes too much noise. Besides, uh, murder is a much tougher rap than safe blowing. Safe blowing? Come on, now, I know you've got the necklace, and you know that you can't get more than four or five grand for it. I'm getting ten for returning it. I'll split with you, and no questions asked. Very interesting. But even if I knew what you were talking about, I'm not doing business with coppers. Now listen, Charlie. I... Oh, ah, ah. Keep that up and Lily's going to collect your insurance. Come on now. Where is it? Well, you seem to be running the show now. Supposing you tell me. Well, let's review the case. Famous necklace stolen. Chief suspects Lily Lamont and Charlie Cooper. Railroad tickets found on premises indicate plans for sudden flight. Train leaves Union Station at 10.40 p.m. Was somebody planning a little trip? <laughs> Sherlock, you amaze me. The case is practically solved. Except for the recovery of the neck. <laughs> I uh, wonder where it could be. Your sense of the artistic surprises me, Charlie. Or was that uh, Lily's idea? Very treasure, eh? The case is solved. Someday you're not going to be so lucky. Ah, oh, you shouldn't go around frightening people like that, Charlie. I'm afraid I'll have to put you where you can't do any harm. Will you uh, step into my office, Mr. Cooper? Good luck. And don't miss the 1040 train. What are you doing here? I thought I fired you. Yes, sir. I'll do. Well, Ridgeway, you won't need Drake on the Phelps case. We got a lead and expect to make an arrest within the next 24 hours, but you're a little late. Barry Drake has recovered the necklace and is on his way here with it. No. Yes. How are you, Mr. Ridgeway? Uh, hello, Barry. Uh, have you got it? Did I ever let you down? Where did you find the necklace? Salvaged it. It was raised from a sunken chest, guarded by a beautiful mermaid. Mm, pretty smart, aren't you? Maybe you can tell us how you always manage to find stolen property so quickly. Sure. I just stop and figure, now where would Lieutenant Eckert look for it? Then I look somewhere else. <laughs> okay, funny man. But one of these days you'll forget the cover up and we're going to hang it on now, you. Now, if you don't mind, I've got to catch a train. And now, may I have the necklace? May I have my fee? Oh, oh the fee? Oh, yes, yes, to be sure. <laughs> Pretty little thing, isn't it? I'll take charge of it. Thank you. That's right. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have uh, guests waiting and all that sort of thing. You understand? Thank you, and uh, good night. Good night. <clears throat> well, that's that. Ten grand. For what? I tell you, Ridgeway, someday I'm going to have... David, Lieutenant, if you don't mind, I've got to catch a train. What's this? It's my resignation. Resignation, indeed. Well, you know I'm leaving for New York. Who do you expect's going to look after things? You stay right here and see that nothing happens. And don't sign any more policies. I'll get that great guy if it's the last thing I do. He's an out-and-out -out crook. I he agree with you, Lieutenant. Ten thousand dollars. Oh, Mr. Phelps. So you recovered the necklace. Of course we recovered it. Uh, that is, it, it was recovered. What is this, a joke? Why, it, it, it's the Tsarina's tears, ain't it? It's a lot of paste, a rank imitation. What? 
Where did you get that thing? Why, Barry Drake brought it. He... Yeah, Barry Drake. I told you he pulled something like this. He keeps the real thing and rings in a phony. Ten thousand dollars. I've been waiting for this. Where's Ridgeway? He just left for New York. He's on his way to the station. I've got to catch him. He... he's... wait. Evening, lady. Remember me? I, uh, can't place your face, but your manner is very familiar. Well, I'm the fellow who brought you here for a good time. And now I've got the rest of the evening to prove. A telephone call for you, Mr. Drake. Oh, uh, thank you. Just a moment. You see, I think of everything. <laughs> Hello. The copper, Eckhart, he just left, boss. He's looking to pick you up. That necklace you retained is spurious. What are you talking about? It's a phony, and they think you've done it. What'll I do, boss? The heat's on. Wait a second, buddy. Meet me at the Union Station as soon as you can. Step on it. What now, little man? A sleeper jump this time? I'll be right back. Wait for me, will you? Oh, sure. I won't budge from the spot, except to eat and sleep. Sorry. May I have this dance? Here I am, boss. Where are we lambing at? We're not lambing. We're looking for someone. Yeah. You love the overnight limited, madam. Air conditioned throughout. No dirt, no noise. It's like being wafted on a zephyr. Never mind the sales talk. I don't want to buy the train. Very well. There she is. At the last window. Uh, excuse me, uh, but that lady who just left here, we're going to the same place. Does she know it? Not yet, but uh, she will. I have two tickets to, uh, to, uh... Cincinnati? That's right. Upper or lower? Uh, two lowers. Uh, my, uh, keeper can't stand the altitude. Just a minute, lady. I've got to catch the New Yorker. I'm sorry. She just left three minutes ago. Oh. Uh, treat yourself to another murder. Hey, want to know who hid the body in the trunk? The phony French detective. Look you old meanie. Frank Fowler. Oh, why, uh, oh, I beg your pardon. What do you want, lady? I've got to stop that man. What man? Barry Drake. Who's Barry Drake? He's a crook. He's wanted by the police. I don't know anything about that, lady. Well, I've got to stop. Well, you can't go in there without a ticket. Those two men, the one with the tuxedo, I want a ticket to the same place. Where are they going? What do you think I am, a tattletale? Oh, please, please. It's very important. He, uh, he, he's my husband. He's running away from me. Oh, oh your husband? Oh, oh, dear. Well, well that's different, your husband. Oh, the brute. He's going to Cincinnati. Hmm. I'll put you in the same berth. Oh, no, no. Just the same car. <laughs> Get me out another suit, buddy. Oh, uh, another suit? I, I, I'm sorry, sir. I haven't another suit. I just packed some shirts and some ties and, uh... You're a great help. We're liable to end up in Florida or even Alaska. What color would you like, boss? Oh, a blue or a gray or... Uh, I'll, I'll put these things in your boy. One melted cheese sandwich on toast, one double old-fashioned. I ain't got that right, is I? You is, and don't fall down while you're running. Uh, yes, sir. I mean, no ma'am. Is she alone? Yes, she. Fine. Here's the other half of that bill I gave you. There's more where that came from. Keep me posted. Yes, sir. I'm the postman. Hello, Well, 
He's in the smoking room now. His birth is low as six. Thanks. I haven't any change, but wait a minute. Take this. Yeah, of course. Pick one out. Where did you get those? Oh, I just borrowed them. The train is full of them. Put them back, White House. This is pretty, ain't it? Put them back. this, a special feature of the Overnight Limited? I beg your pardon? Oh, that's quite all right. That's quite all right. Do you want me to ring for the porter? I should say not. Two's company. Will you please get out of my berth? Your berth? This is lower nine, isn't it? <sighs> it is, if you uh, stand on your head. Oh, well, I I'm sorry. I, I don't know how it could have happened. I understand. It's the nesting urge. The old homesteading instinct. I, I come from pioneer stock myself. But it's so stupid of me, Mr... Uh, Dalton. Mr. Dalton? I, uh... Now, if you'll go and I'll get myself together... Oh, no, not at all. I'll take birth number nine. After all, <laughs> anything to please a lady. Uh, you are a lady. Hey, mister. Will you and your wife please pipe down? We want to go to sleep. The, uh, neighbors are complaining. Good night, Mrs. Dalton, and uh, pleasant dreams. Good night. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Don't apologize. <laughs> I, I represent the Fletcher Form Fit Hosiery Corporation. Could I interest you in our latest creation, Miss America? Snag proof, run proof, absolutely impervious to the dangers of modern age. No, thanks. I'm knitting a pair. Ah, competition, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Good night. Good night. I'll wear them myself. Oh, uh, Mrs. Dalton, may I come in? No, no, not now. I understand. I uh, hear something you, uh, overlooked. me to send a telegram. Yes, ma'am. We stop here five minutes. Oh, sure. I'm going into a compartment. You follow her and find out who she's sending that telegram to. No. How'd you make out? Well, I, I didn't get what was in the telegram, but it was addressed to a Charles Cooper at the Windsor Hotel, Cincinnati. Good work, Whitey.
Windsor Hotel, please. I'm so glad you got here. Where are they? Here they come. But don't arrest them now. They've got to lead us to that necklace. White House, I see a friend of yours. Here? Yeah? Over there. That man again. Windsor Hotel. I'll stick with him somehow, and you follow. Right. Yoo-hoo, here I am. Yoo-hoo, here it is. Driver, take us to the Baltimore Hotel. <laughs> I don't blame you for not waiting for me. After this, I'll stay right close to you. Uh, please, Miss Houston, I, uh, I don't feel that way. Oh, well, if I'm annoying you, I'll follow her myself. It's the young lady who's come up with your search last night, isn't it? Now, uh, wait a minute. How are you at stopping bullets, boss? How about it? They say it's just like going into a deep sleep. No, not now, Whitey. Uh, wait till bedtime. Hmm, too bad, too. She's rather pretty. Eyes gray, lovely eyes. Well, here we are. Keep the change. Windsor Hotel. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Taxi. Windsor Hotel. Step on it. <clears throat> never mind. Never mind. Get a cigar. Charlie, what happened? You weren't on the train. Did you get my wire? I was delayed. I flew in this morning. Got it? Yeah. Don't, darling. That thing's a jinx. What's the matter, kid? Something wrong? Plenty. Barry Drake followed me all the way from Chicago, went through my bag on the train. What? I finally slipped him at the station, rode around in a taxi. I, I think I've lost him. May I change your linen? Oh, all right. You know, Charlie, I think... Three oh eight. Here we are, sir. Just a moment, sir. I have a little gadget. If it isn't little Miss Operator number 13, Whitey, isn't that a pretty sight? <laughs> Looks like the hot seat. <laughs> well, come on, honey. Tell Papa what happened. <laughs> that dialect is terrible. Oh, that's the trouble with them foreigners. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry, we can't understand a word you're saying. 
no, no. Oh, oh, pardon me. I'm sorry. If you think this is funny. Uh, why do you? It looks like we missed connections. Yeah. Come on, let's go. No, you're not going to leave me here like this. Why not? That's the way we found you. If you don't untie me, I'll scream. I'll take care of that. No, wait, wait. I have valuable information. If you untie me, I'll let you in on it. Now, please, Miss, Miss, whatever your name is, don't start that again. Oh, but I have information. Honestly, I have. Cut me loose and I'll tell you. White House, shall we take a chance? You always have. All right. <clears throat> Let's have it. Well, after they tied me up, the man made a phone call. Did you get the number? Main 8451. Hmm? Or was it 8514? Uh, higher up again, Waddy. No, wait. It, it, I remember it was 8541. You're sure of that? Yes. And he said he'd be right over. Get that address. Information. Uh, this is official 23. I'd like the street address at Main 8541. 201 West 3rd Street? Thanks. 201 West 3rd Street. Why, that's Mondoon's place. Come on. Oh, no, huh. White House, draw a bath. What? For the lady. Where are we going? You're not going anywhere. Huh? You're a cute kid, but you're a very phony reporter, and frankly, I... Uh, I don't want you around. Mr. Drake, the bath is drawn, sir. Barry! Barry, what are you doing? Saying goodbye. What? I'd rather have it end like this and treasure you as a beautiful memory. But you big brute, let me down! It's a pleasure! <laughs> I'll get even with you if it's the last thing I do. Cooper, that necklace is too hard for me. I can't handle it. I won't handle it. Listen, you. Charlie, don't. You'll only get yourself in a jam. And what do you think we're in now? Well, can't we send the necklace back or lose it or... Oh, don't you know any place we can get rid of it? Not in this town. About your only chance is Louis Andre in New Orleans. If I were you, I wouldn't lose any time getting there. Louis Andre, what? He doesn't know me. I've never done business with him. I'll give you a card of introduction to him. You'll get your passports and you can land to Atlanta. Speak of the devil. What's in there? The storeroom. Slip in there, both of you. Who's gone? Here, you better take this. Hide it on you somewhere. Good day, sir. Mr. Mondoon, isn't it? Yes. What can I do for you? You can tell me where Charlie Cooper is. Charlie Cooper? I... I don't believe I know the gentleman. He's the fellow who telephoned you a little while ago. Remember? I think you've made a mistake, Mr... Mr... Uh... You've made the mistake. Drake's the name. Barry Drake. Now, listen, I'm getting just I a little... You, Drake, I haven't got that necklace. I, I wouldn't touch it with asbestos gloves. That's the truth. Now, look, Mondoon. I've got enough on you to hang you, but I'm only interested in what directly concerns me. I'm giving you a chance to cooperate. <laughs> Louis Andre, New Orleans. This will introduce two friends of mine who... Two friends, eh? That wouldn't be Charlie and Lily heading south for their health, would it? Let's get out of here. How they are, do I have to look for them? I've been telling you I... Quit stalling, Mundoon. I don't know. I tell you, I haven't seen Charlie. Just a minute, Drake. Remember me? Hold on, kid.
lady. Now, this ain't no pop gun. Come on, get out. Come on now, Drake. I want that necklace. It so happens the man who has it just went through the alley door. You don't mean to tell me. I believe you, Barry. Of course you do, Miss Houston. Barry, what are you trying to do? You always wanted to be close to me. Now's your chance. You'll get life for this. Thank you. Boss, they went that way. But this is their car. Let's go. Close one. Yeah. Yeah. But let me take charge of that necklace now. But I haven't got it. What? It's in the suitcase. The suitcase? In the car. Oh. Uh, now we gotta chase them. Dinner is served. I thought you filled a tank. So busy trying to get rid of me at a gas station that you forgot to get gas. Ha ha ha, serves you right. Mr. Drake, if there ever was the time, this is the place and the girl. Shut up before I say yes. At this rate, we'll get to New Orleans in about two years, maybe. Ah, New Orleans. Hmm. Before you develop into a soapbox orator, suppose you get on your horse and see if you can find us some gas. And a hamburger. Look, there must be a house over there where that smoke is. Maybe they got gas. Let's go and see. And leave me alone here in this jungle. Oh, no. Hello. Hello. Hello! White House, did you ever see anything like that? Yeah, in Esquire. Uh, is there anyone here who can talk? We, uh, we saw your house from across the stream and thought you might be able to help us. Lucy, go tell your pap we got furners onto the property. Hey, Pappy! We got furners! Who are you, stranger? Uh, why, uh, my name's Dalton. We ain't trapping no Daltons. Get. Uh, he means we belong to the wrong mob. No, you see, that's the first name. The name's really Dean. Dalton Dean. Yes. Kind of wet, ain't you? <laughs> yes, a little. Suppose I could come in and dry off? Oh, I reckon you might as well. Ma will take care of you. Oh, thank you. Oh, dear. What's the matter? It's my purse. I've lost it. Well, never mind. You just carried it for an ornament anyway. <clears throat> What's your trouble, stranger? Well, um, you see, we ran out of gas. Do you know where we can get some? 
The night's over yonder. How far is it? About two hoops and a holler. Mm. White House, start whooping. <laughs> Get! May I intrude? Apparently, it's inevitable. Well, I never realized that Lily had such good taste. Thank you. Think we'll be here long? Oh, about as long as Whitey can take. Why? Don't tell me you're anxious to get back to work. No. You like the glamorous life of a reporter? Oh, it's the usual run-of-the-mill stuff. Fires, murders, riots, airplane accidents. Day after day, week after week. Sounds horribly dull. Oh, it is. Sometimes you're lucky enough to run into a tall, dog. And, uh... Then? Oh, then it's very exciting. And dangerous? The great! I got the gas! Would you come here a minute? Excuse me. Well? Boss, I've been against it all along. Mr. Drake, I've stated repeatedly that a man has certain instincts. I've tried to imply that... Whitey, what in blazes are you talking about? Mr. Drake. Boss, get a load of that. Where'd you get this? In a place, when I found it, and I don't like it either. What's it mean? What's it sound like? Boss, I begged you to let me push her off the train. What for? Now we know who she is and what she's doing. Mr. Drake, I hope you're finally convinced. I hope you realize how far you've been sticking your neck out. Why the dirty, double-crossing, two-faced, baby-faced little... Go put that gas in the car. Yes, sir. What is it, Barry? Anything wrong? No, nothing's wrong. Whitey just found your purse, and also this telegram from headquarters. Barry, I can explain... Save it. Now we understand each other. Barry! Man again. Stand where you are. I said step. <clears throat> Sorry, Eckert, we can't hear you.
Ricky. Ain't it nice to be alone? Yeah. Whitey, she's liable to get hurt back there. We ought to go back. Oh, I say you're crazy. You've been trying to shake her. We're going back. Please, for my sake, don't go back to that shooting gallery. Get out, both of you. Well, Charlie, how lucky. I've been looking for you. Yes, I know. I was afraid you wouldn't find me. Charlie, it's gone. What'd you do with that suitcase? Suitcase? I haven't got any time to waste, Barry. You know the necklace was in that suitcase. What? Now, uh, men, gentlemen, I've been trying to explain that I am an officer of the law. You're traipsing on private property. I know, but it was only after them city folks. You know, that man in the tuxedo? Tuxedo, you know, tuxedo. Oh, them, yeah. them fellas in the circus clothes? Yeah, yeah, that's oh. it. Oh. Yeah. that jar of face cream. You know, the, the jar, the thing that... You can't have it. The lady gave it to me. What? Uh, may I look at that for just a minute? I'll give it right back to you. Give me They're gone. If you're looking for them glass beads, the lady took them. You're all under arrest. And I want those jewels. So do we. Miss Harrison. Good morning, Lieutenant. Well, I got him back. And that was a great job you did. Yes, Mr. Ridgway is going to be very proud of you when he... I'll do the talking here. My apologies, Lieutenant. Now, if I may have the necklace, Miss... Oh, uh... yes, yes, the necklace. Mm. Mm. That was nice work. And you thought you could get away with returning this pony. <laughs> I repeat, Miss Harrison, that was nice work. Nice. And as for you, Drake, what have you to say for yourself? Nice work. He just said that. Wise guys, huh? When you're up there doing a the stretch with Lily Lamont and Cooper, you'll have time to think up a lot of wisecracks. Ah, Mr. Phelps. Well, Lieutenant, I received your message. Have you got the necklace? Have I got it? <laughs> have I got it? What do you call this? I call that a beautiful collection of glass. What do you mean? But that's an imitation. Where's the genuine necklace? What do you mean, an imitation? Why, why... Now, now, now wait. Look, Eckert. You sent for me to deliver the necklace. Now, where is it? Now, look at here, Phelps. I've gone to a lot of trouble to recover this necklace. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I think you're making a great deal of fuss over nothing. That necklace is an imitation. How do you know? Because I returned the genuine necklace originally. You returned the genuine necklace. Hmm. Here's what you returned. A phony. What? Why, this is it. This is the genuine necklace. What? Why, you dumb flatfoot. 
Who's a flat foot? You. I chase gentlemen, people all the... Gentlemen, please. I work here. Oh, sir. I get these people together, run all over the country. You tenant. Place this amongst your souvenirs. Bah, bah. You're okay, sister. I'll be at the apartment, master. And now, Mr. Dalton, I have work to do. I get it. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Dalton, uh, what time do you go to lunch? One o'clock. Then we have an appointment at the City Hall at 1.15. Good morning, Miss Harrison. Good morning, Mr. Ridgway. Anything happened while I was away? Not a thing, Mr. Ridgway. Not a thing.